Baseline Brad here with Soul Trotters. Hey, I've got another haircut by my wife. This is number six or seven. She's getting better. Anyway, seriously. <laughs> hey, I love to read books on leadership, uh, especially about former athletes and uh, coaches and things like that. And uh, in the Transparent Leader um, is volume number three that I've been reading. Uh, there's a great story about Bill McCartney. He's the former head coach of University of Colorado and he's also the guy that started uh, uh, Promise Keepers for Men. But uh, this one particular season towards the end of his career, the team was undefeated. And um, this, this particular day they are having practice. And to get to his practice area, you had to go out the locker room, you had to go down a steep embankment, and then about another uh, that was about 110 yards. Then you had to go about another 50 yards across a, a gravel parking lot. And then around a big gate, there was three football fields that they practiced on. They were side by side. And on this particular day, he was on the third field over. So it was a pretty long walk from the locker room. And uh, he was working with the offensive linemen. And two of the student managers came out and yelled across, hey coach, you have a phone call. And uh, being at his practice, he wanted to make a statement to his coaches, to his players that, uh, and coaches too, that, you know, this is my priority at, during practice to work with the men. They said, but coach, it's Sports Illustrated. So he thought, oh, I, I think maybe I should take this. So he kind of had to eat crow. And as he was walking back um, towards the, the, across the fields, he was thinking, you know, Maybe they're calling me to apologize because they've been kind of mean to me over the years. And then he was just going a little bit further. He thought, well, maybe they're going to talk about the team, you know, because we've, we're undefeated this year and we're nationally ranked. We're in fourth and maybe they're going to talk about our chances of, of winning the national championship. And then by the time he's getting up to the locker room, he thought, maybe they're going to talk about me and maybe they're going to talk about, uh, you know, how good a job I'm doing in different things. So he picks up the phone, he goes, hello, this is Mr. McCartney. And uh, they said, uh, yeah, this is Sports Illustrated in Chicago, in kind of a meek voice. And he said, yes, sir. Well, coach, your Sports Illustrated subscription has expired. So <laughs> he realized then that sometimes you get, Life just brings you humility. You're humbled in a way. And that reminds me of, of a time that I first learned about being humble and things when I was playing basketball as a youngster. When I was in sixth grade, I just started as the tallest kid in the class. They asked me to play. I wasn't very good. I averaged maybe one free throw game that I made and maybe a shot that I got underneath. But uh, I realized I had a little advantage being taller than some of the other kids. So I practiced really hard. By seventh grade, I was, I was much better than most of the kids. And by eighth grade, I pretty much was one of the best players around. And uh, our coach, Coach Sheen, he would brag about you to the other PE classes if he thought you were good at something. And he had a way of talking to you. He did this with his teeth. Men. We were only in seventh grade then when, was, when I first had him. <laughs> and he's, and he's the first time we're wearing a jock strap and all these different things. But, but uh, he would brag about you to the other classes. And I kind of got a little f full of myself because the kids would tell me how good coach said you were and different things. So I started bringing that home and bragging at home. And my dad said, uh, I always remember, and he doesn't even remember having this conversation, that Bradley, you shouldn't uh, brag about yourself. Uh, you should let others brag about you and just let your game do the talking. And that uh, kind of humbled me and kind of really stuck with me throughout my life. And fast forward to when I was in my 20s playing, playing in a pretty competitive league. I remember um, we were going to be playing a team that we were really outmatched with the next day in the championship. But there were some games that Friday night and was watching them. And that team, a lot of the members kept saying, we're going to really give it to you tomorrow. And... I just said, well, we're going to do our best, even though I kind of wanted to say, I'm going to really go after you guys. But, uh, but I decided to be humble. That kind of came back to me. And the next day when we played, 
I had a whale of a game. I had 30 some points. Uh, they tried multiple people to guard me. They just couldn't guard me. I was guarding their best player a few times and shutting them down. But uh, we still lost the game, but I had a, a great game and I, I felt, felt good about uh, our chances, um, even though we lost cl a close game. But uh, so that, it just, it just pays to be humble uh, to let uh, others talk about your game and uh, your achievements and just do your best. If you like our videos, um, like us on Facebook and look at other social media sites and follow us. Thank you.